Welcome to Shri Sunday New York Times Read Along. My name is Neil Parikh, and I'm the executive producer of our show. Uh, we are live every Sunday at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, uh, whether uh, Shri is hosting from uh, his home in on the Upper West Side in Manhattan, or whether I'm uh, he's traveling, I'll guest host. Um, but we're, we're always live. We live stream to Facebook and LinkedIn. And for everyone watching us on uh, um, uh, in the archives, watching us uh, the, watching the recorded version, thank you for taking the time to to watch. Uh, we definitely encourage you to leave your comments and uh, ask your questions, and we'll make it a point to uh, answer your questions and, and respond, uh, even if it's after the fact. We have a great production team that uh, brings this show to you every week. Uh, Paula Kiger produces the show on Facebook. Steve Taylor produces it on LinkedIn. Uh, this week, Julia Weeks is stepping in to produce on, on LinkedIn. It really does take a village. It takes several people to make this work. I am managing the show from um, through StreamYard, which is a great app we've been using over the last several months that lets us uh, live stream uh, to multiple uh, platforms and allows us to do some things like using lower thirds, some graphics, showing video, et cetera. So please let us know where you're watching from uh, and make sure to hit share. Uh, we see that uh, Deborah Kerr is watching from Fort Lauderdale. Hey, Deborah, how you doing? Um, and uh, Jonathan Borstein is watching from the East Village. Uh, Jonathan, always great to see you. Uh, and we have our uh, international traveler, Ron Thomas, uh, this time logging in from, Bom uh, from Mumbai. Uh, Ron is based in uh, Dubai and does a lot of work in Southeast Asia, but always makes it a point to watch the show. And we had a great uh, time with him as our guest earlier in the year. So thank you, Ron. Uh, Diane Stefani is joining us from Margate, New Jersey. Uh, Rochelle uh, Philippek uh, is joining from Hastings on Hudson, my neighbor uh, from home. So uh, uh, that's always great to see. And Paula Kiger, one of our producers, joining us from Tallahassee, Florida. Um, Doug Levy from Seattle this time, usually in San Francisco. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm going to bring in Shri. I'll let you know our guest is Leslie Wayne. She is a former New York Times business reporter and a, uh, currently on the faculty at Columbia Journalism School. Uh, we'll be talking with her about um, several of her projects, including uh, her series on international corruption uh, from several years ago. Uh, her work with Times Journeys. Um, we've seen ads for that in the paper. Uh, she actually is on the faculty for that. She's also works with the New York Times School. And we'll cover some great special sections in today's paper, uh, including an excerpt of a new fiction by James McBride, um, One Pot uh, Cooking uh, from by uh, Sam Sifton, uh, a feature story on the Australian wildfires, and, and much, much more. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on Shri Srinivasan, the host of Shri Sunday New York Times Read Along. Shri, good morning. Hi, Neil. Good morning. How are you? Great, great. I'm going to turn it over to you and uh, look forward to a great show. Thank you. And it's wonderful to have all of you here again. This is the New York Times Read Along, and we're absolutely delighted that you can spend time with us on a Sunday morning. It's cold in New York. It's just a few degrees uh, warmer than yesterday, but it's, you can see my breath, it's uh, more than, you know, we're the, I think about 30 degrees, uh, which is uh, well under freezing here in New York City. I'm going to just give you a quick show of where we are in New York. Uh, I'm on the upper, and you're looking at Midtown and Downtown Manhattan. Over there, you can see a little bit of Central Park. It's all the leaves are, of course, not yet uh, back on the trees, but you can see the skyline of New York City, and there's the mighty Hudson River. Nigel is watching from Heathrow, and uh, you can see New Jersey on the other side over there. Uh, we really want to say thank you to everybody for being with us. Doug Mara is watching from Poland. We're going to ask our guest, Leslie. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, Leslie's Pol Leslie Polish-American. So that's wonderful. I wonder uh, if Dagmar knows that. Achit's watching from Hyderabad in India. Uh, thanks for being here, folks. Please tag your friends and family. We have a wonderful veteran journalist to help us understand the New York Times. She used to be at the New York Times. 
Nigel says we're better off than wet and windy England, even though it's so cold in New York. And um, please tag your friends. Please hit share right now. We're also on LinkedIn. If you haven't uh, been recent weeks, we've been on Facebook for four plus years. And this is our first year on LinkedIn Live as well. So please tag your friends, hit share, and we want to know where you're watching from. Thanks very much. I'm going to to say hello one more time and also do a pitch for our social media weekend which is coming up on march 21st it's a saturday with extra activities on friday night including a wonderful reception at muckrack it's produced in concert with our friends at pace university they're hosting us in their beautiful new student space we have workshops panels headliners keynote speeches uh, social media doctors, free headshots, so many things happening. It's New York's leading social, digital, and mobile conference, and not just because I say so. Please join us. It's on Saturday, March 21st, and you'll also uh, get some great events on Friday night, including a wonderful reception at our friends at Muckrack. So please tag your friends. Please tell them it's on Saturday, March 21st in New York City. And we are looking for sponsors for that program. And of course, for the New York Times Read Along, which is done as a labor of love. And we'd love to have uh, folks uh, sponsor this conversation. I also want to uh, tell you that we have landed the great Cheryl Wu Dunn and Nick Kristoff as our closing keynote speakers at Social Media Weekend. So you'll want to make sure you come for that part and the entire part of Social Media Weekend. So check that out. Their links are on the screen and we'll also talk about it later in the show. So thanks very much, everybody. And we're gonna get started. And speaking of the New York Times, let's go inside and close the door. Yes, oh wow, it's warm. Let's say hi to Leslie Wayne. Hi, Leslie. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for doing this. Listen, it's my pleasure. And it's nice to be connected with everybody from around the world. And to the gentleman in Poland, Jim Dobre. Oh, nice. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Uh, so, yeah, let's start there since uh, we talked about your family. So you have Polish roots? Yes, I have family in Warsaw. Um, I've got family here and I've got family in Warsaw. My grandmother and all my grandparents came to, to America through Ellis Island um, at, the, at you know way back when. And some of our family came here and some of our family stayed back in Poland. So our family names are Pokshiva. Um, you know, at Pokshiva and Strugawa, Majewski are here, here in the United States. So uh, my cousins Tadeusz Strugawa and Monica Strugawa in Warsaw. If the gentleman happens to know that, you never know. <laughs> yeah, you never know. It's, it's such a small, small world. Um, and we got to know each other uh, 15, 20 years ago at, uh, at Columbia University at the journalism school where you were uh, first teaching. And when I was working there, it was great to uh, see you and have, you know, you were still um, work, working at the Times and the connection you had to the paper was for a, a long time. So let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, um, I worked at the paper. I, I, I actually came to, came to the, um, the paper after having been in Columbia at the business school and in the Night Badget program. And I have been at the paper for almost 30 years. I was there for 29 years. And then I left and I still continue to write for the paper and also was then in academia where I was teaching and teaching business journalism. In I multiple places, yeah, in multiple, multiple, places, multiple yeah. places. And we'll definitely be talking about the business section today. And you continue to do stuff at Columbia and at the New York Times and, and several other places. So we'll talk yeah. about all of that. I also want to uh, tell folks uh, and thank the folks who make this possible our friends Neil Parikh, who's executive producer, and our friend Paula Kiger, who's in Tallahassee, who makes this possible. Have you been to Tallahassee? I think I have. You <laughs> think you have? Okay. I think I have. I've okay. been to many places <laughs> in Florida. 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 Right. I've never been to Tallahassee. No, I have been to Tallahassee. You have. Yeah. Some reporting there. Good. Yes. Okay. Also, want to thank Paul uh, Julia Weeks, who is helping us produce this, because it takes a team of people to make this happen. Because we're live on Facebook, live on LinkedIn. And then we're using the StreamYard tool to share on multiple platforms. If we had a sponsor, we could afford to add another platform, something like Twitter uh, or, or YouTube Live as well. And so we could do all of that if we had a, we had a sponsor. We also want to 
point out uh, one of our other friends who's here actually with us with Leslie. Uh, come on up here. Uh, just uh, have her say hello. This is Vandana Menon. Hi, good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, Vandana is a recent grad of University of Pennsylvania and a journalist from India who is uh, just graduated. So she's in the job market. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, uh, what are your kinds of things you're interested in, Vandana? Um, I used to work in digital media, so I'm interested in, in continuing to explore that space. Anything from politics to culture, I'm looking to make the most of my experience abroad. So I'm really open to anything. I'm excited to be here this morning. Yeah, great. And let's ask, since you've worked with uh, internships and helping uh, uh, students, what is your advice to uh, Vandana and all the young folks who are you know, looking for work in journalism. Uh, they may also be parents watching or saying, oh my God, journalism is such a, uh, in, in such flux now. Yeah, how do you, uh, what do you say to all of them? I, I think that when something is in flux, that creates opportunities. So I think it, to go into journalism, whether it's, you know, somebody who's out there listening, wanting to go into journalism to you, is to cast a broad net to sort of see what are your interests? What are publications that would be a good fit with your interests? Um, and apply broadly and to, to many places. And to think about places that you might not have thought of that might be a little further out on your radar screen. So yeah, yeah. go for it. And what about the environment generally for journalism? How do you feel about all the changes happening right now? Well, I think that, you know, because I have to deal with a lot of students who are coming out of school who are getting jobs in journalism. And I'm surprised at the opportunities that there are online um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of chaos. So, of course, you know, students are interested in mainline publications and, and go for it because a lot of mainline publications are hiring. But also there's a lot of new publications online, digital. So I would keep, you know, I would apply in both directions. I would apply. I would just apply everywhere. Really. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the things that we always say, Leslie, is that if you're a business journalist, there's always work. Is that still true? Do you I find it? Yeah. I think that's still true because I think having a little bit of a business background mm. is good for any, you know, any subject. If you're covering sports, to know something about business, to cover fashion, the business end of fashion, just knowing a little bit about business really adds to, you know, adds to what you can bring to the party. Mm -hmm. And you come up with some interesting stories. I mean, there's business angles to everything. I mean, as I say, like sports, fashion, <coughs> Real estate, of course, is a, big, mm. is a big story. The economy is a big story. But a lot of things that you wouldn't think about have a business angle. Great. Thank you. And Vandana is going to be helping us with Twitter. And she's going to be tweeting out what we're, some of the things we're saying here. Leslie's not on Twitter herself, but she is on Facebook. And she's posted this on the Facebook alumni group of the New York Times. And so we're going to, I'm sure, have some of your uh, colleagues here. And I also see Neil Gunslinger is already here. Neil was a... Um, co guest on the New York Times read along. And we've had so many wonderful New York Times colleagues who've been on the show, including Stuart Elliott, who oh, you yes, worked Stuart with for a long with time. Stuart, yeah. Stuart, the legendary New York legendary Times. Uh, He's uh, funny. He's very, very funny. Advertising columnist for the New York Times. He's and hilarious. then Monica Drake, who was travel editor yeah. and uh, now is an assistant managing editor. Kevin McKenna, yes, your former the, colleague. Uh, in, in Biz Day, yes. Yeah, Biz Day. And we also... Um, uh, just had at her home, she, she hosted Neil as we uh, talked about the travel section, Amy Vership, the oh, new New York Times nice travel company. editor with uh, Seb Modak, who does the 50, who did last mm -hmm. year's 52 Places. Oh, yeah. And so we did it on this year's 52 Places oh, at our wow. home, which is incredible. Uh, cool. So we are so grateful. Um, so before we talk about the paper and everything else, mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask you, uh, what is it about the New York Times that could inspire so much interest and love, and in some cases, not so much love, uh, about the paper, what it means? What was it like to work there? Look at what we're doing. We're reading out the paper on Sunday morning, and people around the world are joining us. Uh, what is it? This, we can just riff a little bit on, 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 this, on this thing. On that this phenomenon yeah. called the New York Times. Yeah. I think a couple things. I think it's the breadth, the depth and the quality of the New York Times. I mean, if you look at this table, I mean, you, it's almost like you can't even read this all in one day. And the Times has a level of, of, of variety. It has a level of creativity. It has a level of excellence. And I think that, you know, in any given section, there is just so much to read. And then it comes out 
day after day <laughs> after day after day. And, um, you know, it's, I mean, I, I take my hat off to all newspapers and all journalism, but I do think that there's something exceedingly special about the New York Times. I also think that, you know, digital for the Times has been, um, you know, it's helped and it's hurt at the same time, but it certainly has broadened the Times' reach. I mean, now it's that the people who read the New York Times are not only just all of us who can get the print edition, which is fantastic, um, but everybody around the world now has access. Anybody, anybody, anywhere has access to the New York Times. And I think that's really fantastic that not only are we a national paper, but we really are an international paper and really want, you know, when you think of what are the premier international papers, well, New York Times is right in there. Yeah, and what was it? What was it like to work there? You know, it's almost like I, I, I it was fantastic. Is the kind of the bottom line because you really get the ability to delve into a lot of subjects really deeply. You get the resources to explore a lot of topics, um, and you have the whole organization to rely on and quality of editors is really terrific. Um, you know, and I always say that with that opportunity comes responsibility because the flip side of it is that when you work at the New York Times, you really have to, you know, your stories have to be solid. Um, you know, there's a, there's a level of quality that's a high level of quality and that becomes your responsibility to maintain that level of quality. So opportunity and responsibility are two words that come to mind when I think of working there. Amazing. And I think all your colleagues have uh, said that in the past. We were just showing a uh, screenshots of the New York Times Chinese edition. Oh, yeah. And you, of yeah. course, had spent time in China. Sure. And my classmate, uh, Ching Ching Ni, mm -hmm. uh, edit launched that section. Yeah. And uh, what was that like to work in China? What were you doing there? And we're showing that the, the screenshots of the, of, Chinese, of the language Chinese language edition. edition, yeah. There's actually a long story, and I'll try to... Yeah, we'll keep it short, we'll keep yeah, because we've got a lot to cover, yeah. Lot. But um, I was in China in 2012. I was a visiting professor at Tsinghua University at the Global Business Journalism Program, and that was just about the time that the New York Times was going to launch its Chinese language edition in China. We were beginning to publish in China. That was also, just as that was getting launched, that was when David Barboza... Um, wrote his Pulitzer Prize winning expose of the Wen Jiao Bao family and their, their finances. And as a result of that story, the New York Times was blocked in China and has been blocked in China ever since. But the, chi the, the New York Times continues to report from China with our, our bureaus. Um, if you have a VPN, if you live in China and you have a VPN, a virtual private network, you can get around the Great Firewall so that we do have a lot of readership in China just around the firewall. And we continue to put out an edition, as you see, or you've seen on the screen, uh, a Chinese language edition as well. And if you go online at the New York Times, you'll see little Chinese characters above the New York Times logo. And if you hit that, the paper goes, you'll, you'll see it'll convert into a Chinese language version. So people in China can get the Chinese language version they can get the English language version. They just need to have a VPN to get around the firewall. And do you think that um, there's any hope that one day they will adjust that? Perhaps. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's hard to say. It just depends on, it's not only the New York Times, it's geopolitical politics. Sure. It's, as yeah. they say, it's complicated. Yeah, and we'll talk about the coronavirus in, in just a minute. Sure. Uh, we've been talking a lot about the New York Times, but we've also done this with uh, the Washington Post. Once we, uh, Neil and I went down to Mark Fisher's house. He's the deputy editor of the Washington Post. We read with him. We read uh, in uh, the Toronto Mail, Globe and Mail. We read the Bergen Record. So uh, we're really interested in celebrating print. So let me ask Leslie about print and what that means to you and what you see as how long the Times will be able to do this. I know you have no inside information. I don't think yeah. your people at the Times know, but well, what is your take on this, what you see before you? 
I think the Sunday New York Times, even the daily New York Times in print is such a rich experience. I think what the Times is doing digitally is fantastic and that's the way of the future. But I, but the, the, but the print edition is a deeper, richer experience because it's visually fantastic, it's portable. Um, and I know how much work goes into things like just a simple graphic that you may not see on, you may not see it online but just some of the graphics, the maps, the layouts. Um, and also what print does is what the Times used to call is the buffet, that you would just, um, you know, you just kind of read the paper and you fall into different articles and you kind of don't do that on, um, uh, online. And it's just a broader, it's a broader, broader array. Yeah, and, and they've, they've done a fantastic job. I just want to uh, just mention that we we're, we'd love to do one of these with the Wall Street Journal. They don't have a yeah. Sunday edition. They have a yeah. Saturday Sunday edition. They have look at their magazine. Um, this is <clears throat> the the Wall Street Journal magazine. This one is all about women's fashion. This came yesterday to the Wall Street Journal, um, where there's the news section, and then they have the section called Exchange. Uh, and look at this: investors shrug off China's bad news. I didn't realize that. And then there's the review section. Uh, where they're again talking about uh, coronavirus on the front page. It says China's Chernobyl, the regime's reaction evokes the Soviet era meltdown, the muckrakers, how McClure's magazine invented long form journalism. So they have books and other things in there. So we hope to read with our friend Matt Murray, who is the editor of the uh, of the Wall Street Journal, and then a fun section called Off Duty, where they can cover, uh, you know, uh, fashion, fashion and, and other and, and, fashion fun, and fun and fun and other and, uh, and other things. So uh, let's get back to the New York Times and look at <clears throat> the smorgasbord here of things that we're going to talk about. Here's the front section of the Times. Here is the Sunday Review. Uh, how to make your marriage gayer? Same-sex spouses feel more satisfied with their partners than heterosexual ones. What's the secret? All right, I have to check that out. Uh, Sports Sunday uh, lead story is. Uh, about uh, Luka Doncic, who is a big time player now. There's a fiction section of the New York Times. I'm sure 30 years ago when you started, that would never have been possible. Uh, but here is that. And then also not possible, a cooking uh, section of the New York Times. They've always had food reviews, but they have really made a great franchise out of the cooking section. The cover story in the magazine is in search of Anselm Kiefer, uh, my five-year quest to understand the mind of one of the world's greatest and most most elusive artists. Uh, your your former home, the build, 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 build. When the housing crisis slammed into a wealthy suburb, one public servant took a beating for embracing a radically simple doctrine. Connor Darty story. So we'll look at that. And then the travel section, which is always a reader favorite. And deep snow, grand views oh, the ja on the Japanese island of Hokkaido. I was born in Japan, so I always try to read as much about Japan as I can, which is often called the Aspen of Asia. 36 hours there. Have you ever written for the travel section? I wrote one story, one for, the, story. One story for the travel section on Cabo, at Cabo San Lucas. Oh, nice. That, that was nice. nice. Uh, yeah, you were kind of you become kind of a freelancer for that section freelancer if you're right. Yeah, paper, yeah, within yeah. the paper. The car washers of Inwood. For decades, New Yorkers have been cleaning yeah. vehicles along the sidewalks. A city plan may end it. Real estate. Big story in New York, a design for aging in place. Very important uh, story. And the Arts and Leisure cover has uh, Zoe Kravitz. She's the daughter of Lenny Kravitz, mm -hmm. I believe. Somebody can correct me. No, 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 she is. She yeah. is, right? And, uh, <laughs> and Lisa Bonet. Bonet. That's yeah. right. Yeah, two mega stars. Um, and uh, Lenny Kravitz went to my school on at, on the east side, PS6. Oh, really? And the Sunday oh, stuff. Like yeah, you live by PS6. PS6. Ups and downs of online fame. Uh, he's a one-track star. What happens next? This is about Mr. Austin, uh, who's a British viral sensation. And then she created a dance but doesn't get credit. 14-year-old who invented the renegade dance. And this guy, Tom Austin, his song Mary Berry posted online, catapulted him into the kind of instant success that can be that would have been impossible before SoundCloud, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. All right. It's like, are they going to become one-hit wonders? That's a, yeah. I haven't read. So, how much of the paper have you already read or skimmed through skimmed. over the last two days? Well, um, 
cooking, travel, <laughs> real estate, the magazine, everything that arrived yesterday. And we should tell uh, people that it arrived like this leisure, from yesterday. Arts and leisure, yeah. the metropolitan section, the front section of yesterday's <laughs> yeah. paper. Yeah. You know, sort of what we got yesterday and then a little bit this morning. We should tell people that if you live in the New York City area, you get half the paper on Saturday. on Saturday. And why... What's the origin of that? Why do they do that? I don't know. I, I would suspect it may have something to do with production. Right. I, I, you know, but it's so good for us readers because we can actually read it. You can, you can yeah. spread yeah. it over yeah. two yeah. days. Although if, you, although if you buy it at the newsstand, you get the whole thing. You yeah. get the whole thing on Sunday. Right. And, and I can't remember, like, historically, when before digital, if we only got, I think, the Saturday -ish paper that you got your doorstep might have just been Saturday and then the big one on oh, Sunday. Sunday. I remember. I can't remember. It's like hey. <laughs> when I arrived in America at the age yeah. of nine, uh, I remember the first time I saw the New York Times on my doorstep. Oh, my father my had ordered it. It was so <laughs> oh, big. I couldn't understand what that was. I think it may have even started on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've also had other connections uh, with the read along and the New York Times. We've had Tom Jolly, the print oh, editor of the yeah. New York Times, exactly. out he to his know. yeah, he would know. <laughs> out to his house on uh, in New Jersey, and we oh, yeah. read the print paper mm -hmm. with the print editor, which is amazing. And yeah. then Mike Connors, mm -hmm. who is uh, the production manager at the printing plant, mm -hmm. we did a Wednesday night read along oh, where we cool. read the next day's paper with him at cool. the printing plant. And That's you can find cool. all of these folks in in the archives on my Facebook Live. You can just go back on my Facebook and find it. And please do connect with me on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Instagram. I'm at Sri Net. Twitter, I'm at Sri. And so let's talk about the front page. And there's a business story right on the front page. In yeah. Bloomberg, liberals see a wallet too big to offend, uh, laying the foundation for a presidential bid with largesse to progressive causes. Let's talk generally about Bloomberg. And uh, you're very familiar with Bloomberg's impact in the business reporting world and in the business world. And without getting into the politics of it, what do you think make of the coverage generally? And where do you think all of this is going? Well, it's, you know, it's tricky because Bloomberg came out of Wall Street and then started Bloomberg, which is a major um, business information company and has a news arm, has Bloomberg News. So one of the questions is, how does Bloomberg News cover the presidential race? And I can't remember exactly, but I thought they may have actually decided not to cover the they presidential They said they won't do any investigative reporting. reporting. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's unfortunate because they have the capability to do some fantastic investigative reporting. But I think this story also shows something that the Times does wonderfully, which is if you jump to the inside, where's the page 18. 18, Yeah. And you will see all the all the I mean, you can read the story and the story is really fascinating about how, you know, um, you know, a lot of how he's using his money for a variety of progressive causes and also supporting a lot of candidates, but also all these graphics. Uh, all these graphics, the way that this this is designed. Two page or, spread, yeah. Or down here, well, yeah, three, it's called double truck. Yeah, a double, double truck, truck on the inside. And a third page. It goes on here. Yeah, yeah. part of part of a third page. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. if you think of all the work that went into putting together these graphics, making sure that the numbers are correct, that the layout works, on top of all of the amazing reporting that takes place mm -hmm. in this story, which is. A lot. Yeah. I just want to read a comment from one yeah. of our former guests and mm -hmm. dear friends of the New York Times read along, Carla Baranakis, who was former copy chief of the yeah, New York sure. Times. She said, when I was editor of the Times, I occasionally got to copy edit Leslie Wayne's stories. Oh, I can tell you she's a delight to work with. And uh, maybe we should have her tell us what were your three biggest mistakes, if she remembers. No, I'm kidding. No, you don't need to do that, Carla. Carla, thank you for all you do. And please uh, tell us in the comments about your uh, local connection newsletter over at Montclair State, where you get uh, uh, you share so many ways in which to take big national stories and how to uh, localize them for local reporting. And uh, it's it's a wonderful newsletter. I recommend it to everyone. And uh, she gets professionals to write uh, or to share one pro tip, as she calls oh, it. I'm sure great. I'm sure she would love to have Leslie uh, share pro tips. The whole conversation today is going to be filled with tips already. She's given us several. Uh, let's see here, the story about the virus. And it says, a quarantine Mao style of 760 million people. As someone who's lived in China, you understand scale of some of these things. But I think for most Americans, to understand the scale of China is very hard. 
it's very hard. I think that, you know, we, we live in New York and we think we live in a big city. And then you get to Beijing or you get to Shanghai and it's 20 million people, 22 million people. The scale of the train stations, the scale of the airports, the size of the city, just the intensity and volume of people is something that, you know, I could, you know, somebody could tell me that before I went over there and then you go over there and you see it and it is overwhelming. And that comes from somebody who lives in New York. I think what's interesting about a lot of these stories is that it's a combination of the story about the disease, but also obviously the handling of it and what it says about the government yeah, and what it says about Chinese society. So there's, you know, there's mu some multiple levels yeah. in, in the coronavirus story, but yeah, China is just overwhelming. I'll, uh, I'll share that I hadn't heard of Wuhan before all this happened and thought it was, you know, some rural area yeah. where this was going yeah. on. And then I read a headline that said, Wuhan is five times larger than London. Yes. And that was like a, almost like a shock to hear that, uh, yeah. hear that statistic. Military fights, brain injuries, but uh, military fights, brain injuries. Oh, this is why yeah. headlines are often, you know, not read, read, not written to be read. So it's funny. Yeah. So military fights, brain injuries, but lacks test. And this is about some of the uh, problem with how the government the U.S. government has been dealing with and Trump with the Iranian uh, attack. 109 troops have sustained traumatic brain injuries. But Trump, in an effort to gain a quick win, uh, said, you know, nothing happened, nothing, nothing happened. happened, nothing happened. Yeah, nothing to see here, yeah, Nothing folks. to see here, folks. Let's move on. Look at this. Yeah. And these are the people who he claims he loves, the troops. And this is a devastating story. And uh, I'd also connect that to this thing, by the virus story, by saying this is a time when we need to trust the leaders of the world that when they tell us something is happening, that it's actually happening, whether the virus is good or bad, or you know the numbers are good or bad or whatever it is. And at least a couple of the major governments involved now, we cannot trust. And certainly that's true here in the United States. And there was a time when, at least on things of public safety, public health, we could trust the government and we can't. Speaking of which Trump's prying breeds anxiety at Justice Department. And post-acquittal, distrust reigns during a purge. And that was, of course, a big story. And learning to fear summer in scorched Australia. Devastation in New South Wales, bushfires or smoke directly affected 57% of Australians. And Australia is a big spread out country. Mm -hmm. Have you been? No, no, one place okay. I haven't been. Uh, tune in tonight to 60 Minutes for a behind the scenes look at West Side Story. And when you started at the Times, there were no front page ads. And now there are front page ads. And then there are connections to who uh, journalism like the 60 Minutes. Oh, here's the Damien Cave story. Uh, really plays out beautifully online, devastatingly beautifully. Uh, I'm just showing this oh, to yeah. uh, uh, oh, Leslie as well. Yeah, with the art. And this is what yeah. we can do on StreamYard. We can actually yeah. go live onto the internet mm -hmm. and look at these uh, Damien Cave stories with uh, pictures from Matthew Abbott and others. Uh, just uh, you know, there's some fantastic photos. And yeah. there was the famous photo in, in Australia of the kangaroo going yeah, by the fire, know, so which became kind so, of a, yeah. an iconic photo. Yep, very, very. And there's very. the story of the cooking. Yeah, cooking one section. pot, one meal. Simplicity was the guiding principle in curating a collection of 24 recipes. And Sam Sifton uh, is terrific. Uh, I, I've, I've known him since he was in the art section. Oh, right, yeah. and, uh, and then... When we were at the Met, we often wanted to learn from other entities about innovation. And so we brought him on a panel to talk about all the cool mm -hmm. stuff the New York Times is doing. I also love On This Day in History, Nat King Cole, 45, is dead of cancer. I didn't realize oh that, gosh, 1965, was, so young. Oh, so young. Yeah. I didn't realize it was so Look how much he accomplished. Yeah. Wow. The Nat King, Cole, Nat King Cole, the velvet voiced singer and one of the most durable figures in American popular music, succumbed to lung cancer at four. 45. Wow. During his illness, 500,000 letters and postcards addressed to him deluged the hospital, which had entered nearly two months. So just in two months. months. In 1943, Mr. Cole with the King Cole Trio recorded Straighten Up and Fly Right for the newly organized Capitol Records. It was such a hit, it helped the label to get started. Great yeah. story. And we'll be talking about obits later. Mm -hmm. Wanted, it says newspaper bandit. I'm not sure what this is a story mm -hmm. about. I'll have to quickly glance here uh 
What is this a story? What is this an ad for? I mean, a, a promo, promo for. for? I don't know. Uh, President Trump has a net approval rating of 23 points in Alabama, the second highest of any state. That's a pointer to. Oh, that's the story in the magazine about what? the race, the Senate race yeah. for uh, Doug Jones's seat. Right. So I'm not. I'm not sure what this is a. Uh, this is an ad for. What are so. refers to? Yeah. Um, we'll find out. I'm sure as we yeah. go on. Uh, Diana's watching from Disney World in Florida. Usually she's in California. Mm -hmm. And you uh, earlier we saw Doug Levy watching in Seattle. Oh. Uh, which is super early in super Seattle, early yeah, in 5 30. Yeah. And then Carolyn Lee is watching in Hawaii, where it's like two in the morning. morning. Uh, or she, maybe at night, the previous night. I mean, previous. Carolyn Lee, who used to work at the Times, or this is a different Carolyn Lee? Uh, Aloha from Hawaii, she says, Sri and Leslie. Uh, that's that's Carolyn. Let me get my glasses. Yeah, she's going to get some glasses, glasses and see if she recognizes Carolyn. I, it's a teeny tiny picture. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it must be. Middle, middle of the night, middle and, of the yeah, night so maybe she's just getting to bed. But yeah, yeah. when you wake up, you're in Hawaii. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. So maybe you don't want to sleep because you yeah. don't want to get up in Hawaii. Yeah. Pompeo says the West is winning. Allies beg to differ. Uh, no surprise there. Below a new dam, a grim turn for the Mekong. And this is about the Mekong River in Thailand. I'll just point out, we learned from Stuart uh, Elliott, the uh, advertising guru at the New York Times, that this ad has been there since... 2017. Yes. yes. They've been putting this ad. Tiffany has had the A3 so, section. Oh, we, no, they might not have been called A3, but no, it was no, a part of 2017. Forever. No, no, ever. 1917. 1917. Sorry, 1970. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Good catch. 1917. Yeah. 100 yeah, that's years. Why, that's why you need copy editors. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why copy editors, too. <laughs> exactly. Stefan says, acknowledging the incredibly brave writers and photographers who go deep into the belly of the beast when reporting on such dangerous scenes like the Australia fires. Phenomenal work, and thank you for showing the world that we need to pay attention. Thank you, Stefan. And and even now, and we, we have reporters that were sent to Wuhan. Mm -hmm. And when the Ebola virus broke out, yep. we had reporters in the Ebola zone. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's it's not only a war conflict or natural conflicts, but it also can be, you know, dangerous situations like, like disease. Yeah. And and we should point out that you know for all the. Trump talk about the enemy of the people and all of this stuff and how much we praise first responders for all they do. Journalists are like first responders. They're the only ones going in, in the, the other direction, direction yeah, where yeah, everyone's yeah. running away, yeah. whether it's 9-11 down there when yeah. the World Trade Center uh, attack happened or these diseases mm -hmm. or fires. Journalists run in, in. along with the great yeah. firefighters, police officers, yeah. uh, everybody else. But we need to remember that. And we have a lot of civilians watching today, so uh, we want to um, uh, re-emphasize that. A new timeline of events as she says he led fight against the virus early on. Well, and there's more about this. And I was just going to point out about Macy's. You know, Macy's mm -hmm. is one of the biggest advertisers in the, in, in the Times and also for newspapers throughout the country. So one of the concerns now with Macy's closing a lot of their stores Lord, yeah. is the implications for support of local news elsewhere in the country Correct. that they're going to lose all those ads. So the New York, I think, section will, the New York Washington store will be high. here. But yes. they, I guess they're closing fur departments Perfect. permanent permanently. In, in many stores, many stores are. There's yeah. just less demand. Less demand. And it shows you kind of how culturally society changes. There was yeah. a time when you absolutely had fur. Had have, fur. You yeah, you, those it. are like your aspirations. Your yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ooh, Dorothea Lang. Mm, wow. for, look, this is one of the most famous pictures of the Depression. Yeah. And it's at MoMA on view now. I'd love to go see. Yeah. If anybody wants to go with me, hit me up. Let me know. We'll go from Dubai to Mars by way of Colorado and Japan. Emirati partners give mission a big boost. So this is about the UAE, my kid brother. Kid brother. He's over 40. <laughs> lives in, in Dubai. And uh, I, I love visiting him there. This is breakthrough about... Uh, University of Colorado's medical campus. So lots of advertising and color really makes it jump. Yeah. As census years, Asian Americans push to be counted. A community unfamiliar with the process and hindered by a fear of exposing themselves to the state. And a very important story here. Should you recline in your airplane seat? I put, posted this online yesterday and a vigorous debate. Uh, so I don't know if you caught this. The, oh, the CEO the, the of... Punch guy. Yeah, so one guy was punching. So the CEO of Delta says... It's your job to ask before you recline. And uh, first of all, he probably is not in and economy not anytime in economy. he's not in economy. He's not right? Well, what, do you, what, is, what is your thought on this? Do you, do you recline? My friend Al Tompkins, who's been a guest on the read along from Pointer, he said, you don't recline if there's somebody in your car behind in your car 
so why would you recline on the plane so that was his thought other people were not so kind i'm it depends i think if it's during the food service you know i don't recline doing during the food service but i do recline elsewhere and i don't think i recline fully but i recline a bit <laughs> well, as much as you can <laughs> and, and i and then the debate i'll put my two cents yes in please the debate. I thought the guy who was punching her was out of line. Oh my God, why would he punch her? Oh punch my God. Her? And he's, he could see the camera he could, too. He, why? He could, yeah. he could also just say, you know, please. Yeah. And but and if she didn't, and unfortunately, he just was stuck in a seat where his seat didn't recline. Yeah, yeah. Because if you're reclining, the person mm. behind you right. can recline. Exactly, kind of a domino effect. Let's yeah. get a young person's Sorry. opinion in here. Let's see. Vandana, what do you, yeah. what do you say about where that? Are you what is, where, you, where are you on the reclining? I think it's fine. Make sure if you want, ask the person behind you if it's okay. Oh, okay. But I, yeah, the punching is not. Yeah. <laughs> no, why he wasn't the guy thrown yeah. out? Like yeah. you know, I, well, I mean, I, already, I think they're already up in the air. <laughs> no, but well, maybe. Are, like, apprehended for less. Yeah, exactly. Now. And and yeah. if I may say, it's also some kind of white guy privilege. If uh, yeah. if a brown guy was doing that, they would make it into a you know terrorism yeah, terrorism yeah. situation. And, and, and I, don't, uh, I don't understand why the flight attendants didn't it's tell him to knock it off because yeah. the woman told the flight attendants right to you know yeah. could you please yeah I just want to say if if for those who are just joining us, Vandana Menon Vandana underscore Menon is tweeting yeah. about the read along. She's on the hashtag uh, New York Times read along NYT read along. So follow her. She's Vandana underscore Menon. And America's old, oddest, I was going to say oldest, oddest political fight, couple fight. The sparks are real. This is oh. about George Conway. And, and Conway. I just do not understand how that's possible. <laughs> I am in fear of my wife uh, when I you know, argue a little bit with her <laughs> to have public, constant, <laughs> ridiculously <laughs> drawn out fights. I can't imagine how, how he survives uh, that. Yeah. Or, Actually, Sorry, she has a yeah, yes. Actually, there's another piece um, I think in today about what uh, heterosexual couples can learn. From yeah, we got it. Yeah, yeah. But um, there was another headline. I think an alternative headline. Yeah. A similar piece saying um, marriage is actually built around dishwashing. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so the where there is like lesser equality, where the woman does more dishwashing, those tend to be unhappier. Right. Uh -huh. I don't know if that's true, but that's yeah. what the New York Times. Okay. So in other words, get a dishwasher and save your marriage. Right. Exactly. You don't want to have exactly. When dishwasher. Rupa and I were first married. Uh, I had, we didn't have a dishwasher, so yeah. I was the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. Now we have a dishwasher, but uh, she will tell you she does, um, uh, she ends up doing more because I think when she sees the dishes, she feels they have to be done. Exactly. I'll say, oh, we can do them tomorrow, yeah. et cetera. Uh, we have some great comments coming in. Diana says, for wildfires and other disasters, there are also reporters, communicators that go in as part of the county or federal effort to help with crisis communications. Mm -hmm. Both Preston Merchant and I have served in this manner and gives you a whole new perspective. First responders are rock stars. And uh, Diana is, uh, and our friend Preston Merchant, the great photographer, are both with the San Mateo County Health System. Oh. And uh, they are journalists who've uh, uh, turned into public communicators. And I learned so much spending wow. a day with them about thinking about how you use social and digital media and all these tools that mm -hmm. are out there. Uh, we also had some comments come in earlier about uh, reclining. I saw Ron Thomas says he declines to recline uh, when he's in uh, when he's in economy, which is not often, so he gets yeah. to fly a lot of business class. He was a guest sitting right here a couple oh, yeah. of weeks ago, and uh, so did I think the line decline to recline also came from Jonathan Borstein, who is tall, and he says he doesn't re recline because he knows, I guess, that he would be affected from the front, so he doesn't recline. Back. It also may depend on the length of the flight. If you're flying right. to India, if you're flying yeah, to China. Exactly. Yeah. So Wanda and I both know about this because there's a great Seinfeld line. You know, when they go to India, they say, coach to India, the only way to go. And they're sitting in the, in, in the middle of uh, the middle, of seat. middle seat. Yeah. Uh, Stefan says, I don't recline because whenever I sleep on a flight, I face plant down into my neck pillow in a pullout tray. It's the only way I can oh, sleep. So I've, that, I've that's, seen people, I've seen people that do that. Way, yeah. I've seen people do I'm that. I'm not a flopper. Democracy scholar gets virtual lab for his ideas in 2020 race. Hmm. Ganesh Sitaraman at left, while at Harvard above from second right and his classmates, Pete Buttigieg, third from left, and Previn Warren, fourth from left, set up a club on democratic reform. And fascinating. Uh, so I, I need to read oh, this. That's interesting. And Buttigieg yeah. hits uh, 10 fundraisers in two weeks. A dash for mm -hmm. cash, it says. This is 
uh, the New York Times uh, election story. By the way, this colors look a little bit like the NPR logo. So it from does. a distance, I thought it was something to do with NPR. Yeah, and nowadays, does. there's so many collaborations, right? When you were yeah. starting out, papers competed and now you know, they're, they're all like in collaborating. Yeah, there's a lot of collaboration, which and we can talk about this too a yeah. little bit. Um, a lot of collaboration that wouldn't that the Times would have never done before. And the Times has partnered with ProPublica. Yeah. It's, it's uh, partnered with the Marshall Project. It's, 60 Minutes, so many Yeah, places, and yeah. it's timed with um, International's, uh, International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, the Panama Papers people on some things. So that's, a lot of it is also, a lot of those organizations are headed by former times people yeah so, so that, that helps yeah, yeah. That helps. and this we had a wonderful yeah. read along on yeah. the 1619 project and there's a great ad on television uh that yes. i saw that was so moving and i well, we should try to find it and share it it was so so good a uh, television ad for again a new york times story that reimagines uh, the entire history of america through the eyes of when the first uh, African slaves came here, and here's Tara. Tara saying hi. I hope I hope you're okay with doggy. Uh, and there's Rupa. Rupa, say hi. Hi. Why are you still wearing your hat so you don't have to? Yeah. Yeah. Sunny Slaughter was our guest when we did the 1619 yeah. project. And uh, Rupa, this is Leslie Wayne, our guest, hi. and that's what Vandana Menon. <laughs> She and Tara were out. Uh, what was the temperature today? It's like 30 degrees or it's less? Not as bad. It's not as bad as yesterday. Okay. Yeah. First, 2019. Yesterday, she went out in 15 degrees weather, oh, which was like minus, really minus 10 yeah. minus Celsius. Yeah. It was uh, uh, really bad. Do you think that what is one of the things to look at the 2019 project? Uh, uh, we're going to show the 2016 19 ad, by the way. One second. Mm -hmm. Let's just pause and that'll give people a chance to see the video. So go ahead. Yeah. Neil's going to show the video. It's exciting. Let's uh, see I how that works. I think it was works. played in the Oscars, and I saw uh, it yeah. was. So we're going to pull that up in just a second. Here it comes. The volume up. I presume the audio is up for others. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll find out. Mm -hmm. Words from the 1619 Project, how slavery shaped America. Uh, we were having audio problems here, but maybe others heard. Otherwise, we put the link to the ad. So you can see if the truth is worth it. And that's a question for uh, Leslie. Do you feel like a project like that, which is so worthy, so important, generation ago, the New York Times would not have done that because it's a little more than just reporting the news. It's shaping it. It's saying this is how we should think rather than this is what happened. How do you just reflect yeah, on that? Please. I also think that, you know, as as awareness of diversity becomes more important and I think the newsroom itself is much more if you look at the newsroom today and you look at the newsroom 20 years ago or 30 years ago it's a much more diverse place so I think that because you have more diversity in the editors and the reporters and the people who are in the building you come up with ideas that 20 years ago 30 years ago people wouldn't have even thought about it just right. wouldn't be on their radar screen because they didn't have that world view so as the newsroom itself is changing, what the, what the paper does changes as well because it reflects what you know the people in the newsroom are thinking. Uh, by the way, that ad is so great that we're actually going to play it again. We did have audio problems, oh, so we're going to okay. now play it again with the audio and give you a chance to stretch if you'd like. Okay. And we're going to play that in just a second. And uh, uh, let's get some audio up here. And stand by, folks. <coughs> I will stretch you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. In August 1619, a ship appeared on this horizon near Point Comfort, Virginia. It carried more than 20 enslaved Africans who were sold to the colonists. No aspect of the country we know today has been untouched by the slavery that followed. America was not yet America, but this was the moment it began.
words from the 1619 project, how slavery shaped America. Thank you, Neil. And uh, that was worth playing again. And I encourage people to check out the project and also check out our interview with Sonny Slaughter, great friend of the program. Uh, the link was posted earlier. I'm sure it'll be posted again. And there it is on the screen. And uh, we've given Leslie a moment to just uh, stretch and uh, let's uh, continue. We have a lot to cover. Catherine Phillips, 47 dies. She was she taught the value of diversity. Uh, look at this lead. Growing up in a black neighborhood of Chicago, Catherine W. Phillips was chosen in third grade to attend a nearly all white magnet school. I was introduced at a young age to diversity, to difference, to ignorance, she later recalled. And uh, she has passed away. A quest to show how differences contribute to business success. Uh, I love reading the obits in the New York Times. George Coyne, 87, a Vatican astronomer and defender of Darwin is dead. Imagine having to defend Darwin, uh, a Catholic figure who could speak articulately about science and faith. And Katsuya Nomura, 84, star behind the plate and grumpy grandpa in the dugout, uh, a star of Japanese baseball, one of Japan's greatest catchers, later known for his tough love as a manager. I am curious about your relationships with the obits. Uh, you've, I, I'm sure, written some advanced ones. Have yes. any been published? Talk about that. Well, I've written some obits on Deadline um, that were published, and I've written a, a couple of advanced obits that have not been published because the people are still here. <laughs> and we won't reveal who they are. We yeah. won't reveal who they are. Did you get to uh, interview them, by the way? I interviewed one, and the other one declined. So there, there are two that are So talk about that. Like, uh, so this... For a lot of foreign, uh, international, even American journalists, it's not routine to write advanced obits at all or to interview the people obit people advanced. before. Yeah, so to yeah. that experience of having that binary yes and no, the yes person and the no, no person, person. Yes, describe that interaction with them. Well, the first one, the no person, was I contacted a member of the family, actually right. his daughter. Right. And his daughter reacted, even though we presented, like, you know, this is the, the New York Times, it's right. an open, it's actually quite an honor. Honor? But in oh this God. case, she was completely offended. <laughs> she was like, you know, how dare you talk about my father this way and all that. Oh, no. So, you know, I thanked her very nicely, and that was yeah. that. But do we know if he even ever had a chance? He he might have liked know. it. Yeah, I, he might have loved know. to no be idea. in that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I have yeah. no idea what happened between his daughter and father. <laughs> um, and then in the case of the, this another person, uh, he was happy to, um, you know, he wanted to talk about his successes <laughs> and what he had done in life. And yeah, why not? Why oh my not? God. Why not? Oh my um, God. And you know, the Times has, I think it's almost, it's either one thousand, two thousand uh, obits that have been done in advance in on file. Because if it's, especially if it's somebody who's really famous, mm -hmm. you know, you can't write it at the last, you can't write it at the last minute. And it's a, it's an art form and it's a lot of, it's very interesting to write the obits. Right, um, I'm sure. You know, you're sure. giving this sort of the last word on a person's life. Right. And you want to be fair, but you, you want, want to be, be honest. Oh, yes. Yeah, you want you to want cover everything. You want to cover exactly. everything. Yeah. Exactly, like, you know, good, bad, and uh -huh. indifferent. Yeah. Let's uh, talk about uh, the Sunday, Sunday business, business. business yes. section. This has also evolved, right? It's become yes. much more visual. Yes. And one, like a cover story. A cover story. Yeah. It used to, a lot of times, well, it depends on the week, but it, typically there was like a lead story and an off lead story. Right. Although, you know, like this week, there's, uh, you know, just one main story, which is about, uh, you know, sort of density of projects and how much, uh, you know, you're going to have single family home projects spread over around the country. You're going to have much more uh, dense, dense housing. And that's what, what the story is based on that theme. Yeah, just before we uh, uh, yeah. go, because you are Miss Business Section, let me just first uh, turn the camera here and say mm -hmm. hello to everybody. If you're just joining us, this is Leslie Wayne. I'm Sri. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being here for our read along. Mm -hmm. I am honored to have Leslie, former mm -hmm. colleague of mine at the, uh, at the uh, well, Columbia good. Journalism <laughs> School. And uh, she is a terrific business writer and teacher of business writing, has taught at ASU, at Columbia, at NYU, uh, in China as well. And uh, she's here visiting us from the east side. And we're talking about the New York Times and celebrating and critiquing the paper as appropriate. And you want to give a shout out to your uh, former colleagues watching at the New York Times? Okay. Yeah. Eddie, when the New York Times alums, hi. Yeah. How are you? I, I know there are lots of people watching who are alums, mm -hmm. and you're still involved with the Times in a couple of ways. Uh, why don't we describe that? Well, I, I, I do some writing for the Times, 
I also am going to be a speaker on one of the Times Journeys projects coming up this summer on the Queen Mary too. So, Wait, so people can go on the Queen Mary and get uh, talks by you? Or are you leading? Are you like a guide? How does that work? They, where there's four of us. There's four no. Times reporters, and we are going to be giving lectures to uh, on a variety of issues that that we cover. And it'll be to a group of people who get who buy their passage on the Queen Mary to through the New York Times on Times Journeys. You can find it online, like Times Journeys. Just Google it, or TimesJourneys.com. And we have special events for them at the New York Times building. Uh, when we're on the ship, there'll be extra extra activities with the four of us and the New York nice. Times passengers, as well as they get to enjoy a wonderful trip over the yeah, ocean, exactly. which I've done before, and it's fantastic. Nice. Yeah. And we also have Rupa in the back uh, uh, coming, uh, preparing our coffee for the morning. Uh, at our home, we have moved to a different kind of milk. Rupa, do you want to tell us about the milk? Oh, yeah. I, this is not product placement, but it could be. If you folks are watching and you want to sponsor uh, great content like you do in journalism. So, yeah, what, what is that? So, I did a lot of research, of course, on, on what's happening to the world. Yeah. This is oat milk. Oat, oat milk. milk. Oat milk. So, uh, is that even milk? Is that a kind of milk? Is that really milk? Well, I don't know. I, I, Oatly, is it milk? <laughs> In the, po in the food lobby situation. Yeah, yeah, the exactly. The cows and the bovine people want to call only that milk. Yeah, anyway. exactly. What do you make of, uh, thank you, thank yes. you for that. So, so that could have been an ad, folks. We could yeah, have been I advertising for you. Yeah, exactly. The oat milk people here. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yes. But, but tell us about like uh, this movement about in the business side of the meat lobby trying to say there's only you know, one kind of meat, the milk lobby saying that. What do you think of I have that? no idea. Uh, I just, I'm old fashioned. I'll yeah. eat the meat. I don't even eat that much meat these days because, you know, it's more for calories. Right, yeah, yeah. And, and saving the environment. Right. And milk, I drink my normal skim milk, the cows. <laughs> the cows, cows. Cows, cows, cows. All right, we're going to talk about the business section. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Please tag your friends and family right now around the world. They can join us on Facebook and on LinkedIn. Four years plus on LinkedIn uh, on Facebook and now first year on LinkedIn and uh, Ravi's watching watching while in Sri Lanka. Have you been? Oh, no. Okay, not been to Sri Lanka. No, no, no. So people in Sri Lanka invite her yes, to come and come and talk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, please share where you're watching from and please tag your friends and family around the world. And another plug for Social Media Weekend coming up March 21st, my flagship event. It's a conversation uh, and a conference uh, with terrific speakers from across the spectrum. We'll be doing panels, workshops, including topics such as Instagram, TikTok, the 2020 elections. It's much more than social media and a chance for you all to learn and understand what's happening in the world of social, digital, and mobile. And this is a photo you're seeing from a previous social media weekend. On the cover there, you saw our guests included Ali Velshi, uh, Joan Walsh, uh, Craig from Craigslist, Craig Newmark, and they're all in uh, at, at Social Media Weekend. So that's the quality of the speakers we have. And we have exactly that uh, this time. Uh, we have 30 plus world class speakers, including uh, we have confirmed Nick Kristoff and Cheryl Wu Dunn, uh, Pulitzer Prize winning uh, New York Times journalists and, uh, they've, uh, and authors who have shown the power of social media. And uh, we've got some great uh, references here, including one from Gianni Riotta, who says, SM Weekend is the best experience you can legally enjoy. Ooh, that sounds, <laughs> uh, that might be over-promising, but uh, we will over-promise and over-deliver. March 21st, Saturday in New York, with pre-activities on, on Friday, including a social media crawl, as we call it, where we'll go from, from the um, uh, two museums, we're going to go to the, we'll, we'll reveal those uh, later, but the Met Museum and one more museum will go with their social media managers and they'll show us how to do Instagram and social media on the road in those museums. And then it'll end with a reception at Muckrack where our friends Greg Gallant and, and uh, Lee Semmel and Mike Schneider are going to host us for a wonderful party. Uh, Muckrack is, are also the folks who produce the Shorty Award, so they really know how to party. So please do join us. September, 20, uh, March 21st, it's a Saturday, and Friday uh, with pre-programming. So check us out. We also need sponsors. So uh, $2,000, 5000 $10,000. We'll take $100,000. We'll take $1,000. Tell us how you can sponsor and support us. And of course, also please support this program project here, the New York Times Read Along. It's a labor of love. 
and it takes a village to put this together. I'm here in New York. Neil is out in uh, our rural DC, not rural DC, suburban DC. Uh, Paula is in Tallahassee and Julia Weeks, who is at the AP is producing this uh, out in, uh, I believe she's in Brooklyn and she will correct me if I'm wrong. So thank you very much. Please follow all of them at Neil Parikh, at Big Green Pen and Julia L. Weeks on Twitter. Please follow all of them. Thank you so much folks for making this possible. And again, a shout out to our audience. We love that you watch every week and uh, this is a great community we're pulled together. And Paula wrote a wonderful story about this community. Please uh, read that, she'll post the link on here. And uh, we wanna expand this to Twitter Live as well. We can do Instagram Live, we can do all of that. If we get a little bit of money uh, to sponsor this, we've been doing this for five years and I'll, before we turn to the business section, just say uh, this is an example of where we do this as a labor of love, so we believe this will be supported and a community has come around it. And so we're very excited. So thank you all for watching. And please, as we talk our, continue our talk with Leslie Wayne, we have so much, I think we have about six hours of material yeah. here, but we only have about half an hour more. Mm -hmm. So we've got to rush through this, but we're not rushed through the business sure. section, her home for many years, mm -hmm. 30 years at the New York Times which is an incredible thing. You started at 12, I believe. I was, yeah, I was nine years old. <laughs> nine I was 12 years old, old. yeah. Exactly. Uh, don't want Alexa to listen. Wear this as microphones and cameras, mm -hmm. they hold. This is some kind of privacy armor. I exactly, yeah. Um, it's so that, so when you're talking, Alexa yeah. doesn't pick up what you say. It's, a bracelet this of is, silence, Yes, wow. exactly. It's got all these like, little microprocessors. Well, you're wearing a bracelet. Would I'm you wear this? Bracelet. What do you think of the fashion quality well, of this? At first, when I saw it, at first I thought it was a fashion story, yeah. and then I realized, oh no, and I, I read it yesterday. Would you wear something like this? Well, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> a plan for expressing misery in the office. So this is fun. This is called mm -hmm. Ask a Work Friend. Yeah. Katie Weaver, uh, would you die for your work friends? I have worked for a small startup that's seen a share of turmoil. Most has been attributed to our chief executive, and it's largely man manifested in the form of turnover. People do not want to work for a man they consider to be overly demanding and mean-spirited. A lot of people whom I enjoyed working with and consider friends no longer work with me. I have a picture of three of them on my cubicle wall. My supervisor said some people have expressed concern that the picture, because it gives the impression that I'm resistant to the positive strides in the company's mm -hmm. culture being made by the CEO. I agreed to take it down because I like my supervisor, but the notion that I should be expected to take down an inoffensive picture of my friends because the CEO doesn't like, it feels like an abuse of power. Is this a valid concern to raise with HR? So let me ask, our business expert oh, here, but yeah, there's no right or wrong answer, but you know, you, you covered enough business. What do you think of this kind of crazy well, situation? It's a crazy situation. I mean, obviously in one case, you sort of want to have like free speech and freedom in the office. On the other hand, if she, I mean, it sounds as though she put the pictures up there to be provocative. Right. And by putting the pictures up there to being provocative, of course, she got a provocative response. Nice. So, uh, I, you know, it's, it, it seems a little, Eddie, to be perfectly <laughs> yeah. honest. It was a rough ride, but he's yeah. still here. Steve Mellenkoff, who is chief executive of Qualcomm. You don't hear as much about Qualcomm now, no. but they're doing really, obviously they're they're, they're succeeding and they're, they're doing succeeding. what they need yeah. to do. Corner office, David Gellis. David Gellis, yeah, Gellis, that was uh, about initially Adam Bryan, who yes, just left the paper, that, started yeah. it, yep, and now yep. David Gellis is picking, picking it up. And um, you know, it's got a big following. It, it just, it's, it's. I'm sure people lobby to be yeah. in these kind of features. Right. And also because they could have, you know, when Adam left, they could have, you know, closed it. Right. But instead, the fact that they're continuing shows that there's interest in it. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I said they're doing fine. Look at, look at how they're, how fine they are. 24 billion Oops. in revenue, no, 37, 37,000 oh, wow. employees, 140,000 patents, 1.8 billion shipments of devices this year. They're doing they're fine. Defined. But what happens is I think these um, sexier tech companies for good or worse get much more attention. They, right? they take out the oxygen. Yeah. yeah. Never mind the internet. This is killing mall. So what is that? It's about all the other things that are like big box stores, a certain amount of yeah, big box stores. Service and, instead of things. things. Yeah, different <laughs> things that. And in income inequality. Yeah. Wow, it, I didn't think of that. As, yeah. 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 Interesting about you know, the effect on um, malls. So that somebody are watching just... overseas might wonder, aren't big box stores also in malls? But these are the big box stores outside, outside of, of the malls. malls. So that's what you know, a lot of times they're out in the parking lot right, yeah. or even, or even look at, you know, some of the big box stores here that have caused small mom and pop stores yeah, to go exactly. out of business. I saw a Target in 
on the uh, east upper, side. Up, now also on the Upper West Side, oh, unlike really? the 60s, there's a Target coming. Yeah. So that's going to be interesting. Well, and there's also a Target up in East Harlem, Yeah, too. that's right. That's yeah. yeah. But that's, you know, kind of out of, it's exactly. near the not river. Midtown, and yeah, yeah, yeah. But not in mid, Midtown or yeah. Upper West Side. Yeah, we still have the ads. <laughs> there's still people looking for jobs yeah. this way. So, yeah. and people hiring this. Okay, you get to pick where we go next. Where do we go next? Um, I would say, you know, the cooking. Okay, I think cooking. the cooking let's, is let's a really special. And then if you want the magazine. Yeah, sure. The so, cooking please. looks fantastic. And tell I us about this evolution under Sam and just generally how the New York Times is from what you've seen. Uh, I don't know if you've ever written for uh, the food section. but No, I've never written for the food section. <laughs> so they have food, they have dining. Yeah, they have, they have it, you know, it evolves. It evolves with the times. I know. Ooh, fire chicken. I got to try this. Yeah, a lot of them. And they look very, I'm not a super cook <laughs> at all. I sort of buy and assemble. But these recipes look really good. And the presentation is yeah. excellent. Neil is, by the way, going to show the online version while we're doing this. Yeah. Vegetarian skillet chili, shrimp scampi with orzo. Um, also, like in our old New York Times building, when we were on 43rd Street, there actually was a test kitchen in that building. Oh, nice. And so the people who worked at the Times could, um, you know, could, could test out the recipe. Do, do they have one now? Or no. Where do they do all this? Now they seem they to be do doing it, more I food. I guess it's like, I don't know where they do it. I think people do it in their own, in their own um, apartments, in their own houses. But the cooking section is one of the one of the real um, sort of stars of the digital age. That's right. Um, Mark franchise, Tom you call it, yeah, right? Mark, yeah, Mark Thompson, the publisher, mm -hmm. or the, um, uh, the CEO. CEO. Sorry, the CEO. When he came in, he sort of designated that as one of the areas that he really wanted to expand in because he felt it had a big reach. Right. And look, we get some ads there Right, too. yeah. And so they put a lot of effort, energy, and resources into the whole food and, and here's cooking. the online version looking yeah. really nice the photography yeah. pops well there yeah. as it does here as well yeah and, and um so i think it's really oh i'm gonna save this and cook yeah, yeah so much yeah yeah the other the other uh franchise that does beautiful one pot cooking is something called tasty on buzzfeed oh, yeah. and they show you how to cook really fast one one my, one my dish one things. one no one dish dishes or i don't know what they call yeah. it like one pot dishes, things like that. Look at this. Okay, I'm getting hungry here. Yeah. I am doing the in, uh, fad of intermittent fasting. Are you familiar with that? Where you eat in a small window. Yeah. So I eat in an eight hour window. I try to anyway. Yeah. That means I'm starving most of the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, so it's hard to look at this. But no. East oh, Fork sorry. is a <laughs> vessel. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's right. else. He, he, what is this an ad? For? So you got to tell like, ad. what is an ad for what? So this we make bowls, ice. plates, mugs. Yeah, I guess really it's, it's North, North Carolina. North Carolina, I guess it's the pottery. And there's an East Fork. There must be forks in in, uh, in North fork Carolina. Carolina. Right? Yeah, Asheville yeah. is in the mountains in the western North Carolina. I used to live in North Carolina. Oh, yeah. And eastfork.com. Eastfork.com. I don't know anything It's a good ad. It's a it's a catchy ad. All right, let's look at the magazine if that's all right. Uh, I've got to say, I've not heard of Anselm Kiefer. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with him? I'm, I'm with familiar him? with him less with his art. I'm familiar <laughs> right. with, with his name. name. With the fact that he's elusive, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this is Anna C. Bailey. He's a writer historian. So she's mm -hmm. one of the stories in here. And look at the letters to the editor there, with yeah. comics and stuff like that. Uh, seeing Us, the beloved lesbian show, The L Word, was ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. Can a reboot? of it satisfying a culture that has caught up by Jenna Worth. And Jenna is a great writer. A lively person, it, yeah. very li lovely and lively. Yeah, lovely and, lively, lovely and lively. Lippy says, Lippy, who's been a guest here, mm -hmm. a doctor who's mm -hmm. uh, on social media and does great communication work. And Lippy and I are going to conspire on some projects together. She says, I love cooking. It can be really relaxing. In addition, home cooking is far healthier and cheaper than eating out. True. A daily temptation in a culinary culinary mecca like new york she says true yeah i thought this was very interesting the q a with um you know with tina brown and also her some of her reflections about harvey weinstein especially since the weinstein yeah, trial is going right, on right now right. and her disappointment in leaving the new yorker and beginning to work for him and how difficult that was right i'm sure how she regretted it immediately i'm, I'm sure it was all right poem? yeah the, uh, the poem so one of the things i do is I read the New York Times poem out loud, which I believe is a travesty because uh, the poet should be reading it out loud, but I will read it anyway. And this is all cold, so I, I don't, I'll mispronounce and miss the meter and rhyme and everything else, at least by Ha Jin. You don't need to appear everywhere, attending parties and conferences randomly. That would show you are still diffident about your art and would also debase you. People who see you in person might think you're too common 
your achievement due to luck like a blind cat that stumbles on a dead mouse. Your frequent appearance would dishearten others because you exist far away at the end of their imagination. You should be watched and not reached. Look, the sky full of stars, which one of them doesn't shine or die alone? Their light also comes from a deep indifference. Wow, amazing poem. Uh, Rai poem of direct counsel by Ha Jin and selected by Naomi Shehab Nye, who is the young people's poet laureate of the Poetry Foundation in Chicago. It feels like poetry yeah. is having a moment now. It is, you know, my, <laughs> my niece at Columbia uh, mm -hmm. works, there's a poetry center down in, in Battery Park City and she oh. does her work study there. Oh my God, that's so, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And here's Tina Brown with Priyanka Chopra, mm -hmm. who's a big star of the moment. Yeah. My ex-wife badmouths me to our boys. Can I tell them the truth about her? Without reading this, what is your quick answer to this question? Kwame Anthony Apaya, the wonderful because ethicist. I, I think parents should be, you know, the answer is no. Yeah. I don't think, you know, parents should be badmouthing the other parents to right. each other. It also depends on the age. If you're, right. you know, adult children, you may talk differently than. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Uh, Wayne Kamadoy, who is at the New York Times, uh, part of the team that uh, uh, Tom Jolly runs, says Sam Sifton and his crew at the New York Times Cooking are real friends of print. Cooking also just got nominated as one of eight digital sites for the world's best design by the Society of News Design. Winner announced later this spring. Wayne, that's uh, terrific and uh, glad to see. And Wayne, it's about time we've had you on the show. We've had so many of your colleagues would love to have you on at some point. Elevated the global rise of the NBA so the New York Times doing books. They've been doing books forever at the New York Times, right? Uh, yes. And uh, that's that's great. And by the way, that's George Vesey. And we, George Vesey, And exactly. we, we're talking to him about doing a New York Times wow. read-along. Yeah. Uh, he's terrific. Starlings by Charles Siebert. Uh, letters of recommendation. They also tip how to ra herd reindeer. Yeah, I know. They have the oddest, the oddest things, things that, that you don't that know that you need. never you in do. a million years. Yeah, we'll think the New York Although Times going to teach you. Yeah. But one day you may one be stuck. One day you and might. Be stuck yeah. And then you yeah. will remember this. I love these. These the are diagnosis, so popular. The Lisa diagnosis Sanders. column by Lisa Sanders. Yeah, right? it's always a fun mystery. Yeah. Uh, to me. Yeah, exactly. I, I yeah, they do it well. And then more cooking. more cooking. See you Sunday. The case for regular dinners with family and friends. We love this. Rupa loves hosting meals for with quiet, uh, you know, with four people, people six people. Yeah. I love 20 to 100 and 200. So and somewhere so, in between. <laughs> somewhere in between is the answer. And uh, in search of uh, Anselm Kelp. Kiefer. 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 Uh, let's see here. Let's keep going. Uh, remind me of your Polish, this, uh, say, your, your Polish uh, uh, original name. Original name. Um, well, my, my family name is Majewski, which is Majewski in English. Right. Um, my father's name was Jan Venink, which is W-N-E-K, which is unpronounceable in English. <laughs> so that's how he changed it to Wayne. Yeah. Um, my family in Warsaw is, uh, my family in Warsaw and here, Polkshiva and Strugawa. Nice. So if anyone's so watching if from anyone's Poland, watching there was at least Poland. one person watching from Poland. Poland yeah. Please and tag I, your I, friends in Poland. Poland yeah. yeah. And I, don't, I was in Poland last year. I'll be back this year again. Too. Nice. Yeah. And Dagmara, Sylvia, Dag Zadorga says hello from Poland. So oh, <laughs> please yeah, pick me, Mr. President. Yeah, yeah. so you're going to say about this. So th this was a very interesting story. It's, it's about uh, the, the race to replace. Well, Doug Jones is the Democrat who won in, in um, Alabama, very unusual election, uh, is up for re-election. And now all the Republicans are lining up. This I also want to point out, which is related to the 1619 Project, all the places mm. where slaves were sold. That are now just ordinary places and there's no recognition. What was interesting in the text, they said it took five months to put this together because they had to track down, there's no, it's hard to track down records of where enslaved people were actually sold. The auction blocks. The yeah. auction blocks. Oh, and oh. to track down where they actually were took, so this is just a couple pages in the yeah. in the magazine. But five and years. it represents five months of work by two or three reporters. So and there's also a good, that shows you the resources that the Times throws at stories. Absolutely. And there's also a good chance for us to kind of plug the Times support. The reason why people should subscribe, the reason people was, should advertise is this kind of effort. Exactly, because it costs money to do all this. Yeah. It costs money to have the photographers, the reporters, the transportation, everything. Yeah. And the only way is going to be through advertising and increasingly subscribers. And right. subscribers both print and digitally. Yeah. And here's the online version of that story. Thank you, Neil. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, right. great. Yeah, they, there's lots lots going on there. Yeah. And we're, we're so glad that you're able to show that. And look at this. Their corner of Broadway and Clark Street in yeah, there are St. Places Louis, where Missouri, there were, there unmarked. Were, there so they're options. saying where it's marked and unmarked. Marked, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And more. I mean, this is sometimes I feel like this. How can you read enough of this? this exactly. Is, this, this magazine Same, will take you a whole a week. week. Yeah, and, exactly. they, and that's one of 30 things that's exactly. put in there. It's crazy. Exactly. So it's called The Long Shot. Jim Walmsley is the undisputed king of ultra running, but can he make the Olympics a much shorter distance at 26 miles? I know for him, 26 <laughs> miles is just like a, a run in the park. Yeah, exactly. For the rest of, are you a runner? Are you a, no. talk a little bit about your extra curricular? My extracurricular activities basically, oh, in terms of exercise, is walking in Central Park. Nice. Like, I love yeah, to walk yeah. in Central Park. Me too. Let's go and for a walk it, one yeah. day. I try to walk five to ten miles a day. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't reach uh, that. I'm, some days I've got my ten thousand steps. And yeah, some days exactly. I don't. So. Natasha's watching from yeah. Montreal. Have you been? Montreal, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. And Lippi says our friend uh, Monica Bieloker is from Poland, uh, Polish American. Okay, we're gonna have a lot of Polish <laughs> yeah. today. And I should say, when I started at Columbia, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah I, I showed up yeah. uh, at Columbia as uh, my first job at Columbia was. Um, uh, working in the television department, mm -hmm. and I replaced a guy named Schmolowitz, one of these great Polish names and with no vowels. vowels and, yes, and, and and Joan Connor, the the dean, then she said, "How would I replace a Schmolowitz with a Srinivasan? And where's a Smith when you need one?" <laughs> yeah. And I pointed out, Smith is like Srinivasan over. Uh, yeah, Srinivasan is like Smith over there yeah. in India. And Lippi says, Dr. Lisa Sanders is a great role model and medical colleague. She's really mastered the art of medicine and storytelling. And yes. Lippi is that addiction doctor who sat here just yeah. a few months ago. Are you a puzzler? I'm, I'm not a puzzler, but I will say if anybody's interested in puzzling, this is another plug for the yeah. Times, the, the Queen Mary uh, crossing that we're doing in July. One of the four times people is Deb Amlin, who is the head of the Crossword Puzzles. Ooh, and so nice. she's one of the four people who's going to be joining the New York Times, uh, you know, contingent on the ship. What and are the dates, by the way? Let's get those dates. dates. And are, Neil's showing the journey the section, the so it's nice. Are, oh, yeah, look, she, he found it. This is your, is. your, your cruise. Right cruise yeah. And you'll be right there I'll in that there window. Waving, yeah, yeah. Be and it's from July 5th to July 13th. It's mm. nine days. It's oh. actually quite affordable. And well, by New York Times, by no, I mean, by no, actually, 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 by normal people. No, so make the really case for is. it. Okay, make the case for it. Make the case for it. It's like, <laughs> it's, I think the price has started like $3,000, but it's for nine days at sea, which oh, includes, yeah, you know, your room and, you're and, all the the Mary. and you're on the Queen Mary, which is a fantastic ship. They have the largest ballroom at sea. They have the largest library at sea. They have a live orchestra at nighttime. Amazing. They have dress up evenings. They've got a fantastic <laughs> lecture. So I should be paid by Canard. Yes. Um, but there'll be four of us and there'll be a lot of activities. Here's the, here's the scheduled experts. Let's go up yeah. to the scheduled experts. There we oh, are. Oh, there you are. You're the first one I'm there. The first wow. One. Chuck that Scrum is... and Deb Am yeah. Oh, wow. Look yeah. At that. So it's a nice, <laughs> I think it'll be a nice group. Um, and Sam Roberts is on it, and oh, Sam right. knows like everything about the city of yeah. New York. He yeah. writes about Metro. And I, I, I've been wanting to ask Sam to be on our show. So yeah. if we get him before July, we can do some more plugs. You can for do some more plugs for the for the crossing. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So the, so what will you be doing? So if I come on the ship with you, what will happen? What will happen? Well, you could dance on the ballroom. Oh, the ballroom there you with go. Me. You yeah. Dance. Now we're going to have uh, four lectures. Each of us give four lectures. And then we'll have some panels. That's a lot. Of, that's sixteen lectures in nine that's sixteen days. lectures. Well, no, but you don't have to. If you're a guest, you don't have to show up oh. for the lecture. You oh, can okay. if you want. Oh, okay. oh, you're you're uh, four different lectures. Or? Four. I get four different lectures. Oh my god! <laughs> and each of us get four different lectures. Wow. And uh, they're about an hour long. Right. With you know opportunity for Q and A. Nice. And then there's all the onboard activities. There's uh, a Canyon Ranch on board. Oh. Um. It's wait. What? What is that? Canyon Ranch is a famous spa. Oh, okay. And they have like spa oh, things, nice. you know, okay. all that. So. so, all right. And then look the time. Look the at the way the club. times are involved, right? Like the wine, wine club, club, they're doing that. $60. Yeah. Uh, new member of, offer instead of. Yeah, there's a lot of ancillary activities. You get your first six dollars, six bottles for $60. That's mm -hmm. pretty good. Pretty That's good. a $10 bottle if of wine. It yeah. depends on <laughs> the quality, I guess. And again, the times when it does stuff kind of Go really does, it goes to town. Look at. Look at how many different yes. crossword puzzles are, or different kinds of crossword puzzles, all yeah. in this. So, uh, have you been to this part of Italy? I've I've been to many parts of Italy, but not Puglia. And yeah. Puglia apparently is the, quite popular now. It's the yeah. boot. Yes, the, on the boot. All right, let's uh, go to the travel, travel section. section. Here's that ad There's in the, the New York Times. Other 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 other, 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 other shows. 
Uh, yeah, so yours is cheaper than some of these other ones yes. that are listed here. Yes, so, yes, yes. Yeah. You get nine days. And yeah, it's there's fantastic. I've, I've done this before. <laughs> yeah, really good. exactly. Hey, we can do the New York Times read along from the cruise ship. Don't forget. Oh, yeah. uh, your executive producer, Sri, uh, says Neil. So uh, we should talk to the cruise folks if they wanted to uh, invite us to go along. Mm -hmm. uh, 36 hours in Niseko, Japan. The resort is known for its sublime skiing, but that's only part of the story. Normally, they don't put the 36 hours on the cover. So I think this is unusual. Well, for also, don't forget new editor. Things change. Yeah, that's so right. Different points of view. And how does it feel? Not this particular thing, but yeah. when you see something you've loved at the Times for 30 years, and you see it change Changing. direction or disappear. Uh, yeah. I remember, I mean, it didn't even matter to me, but I cared when the Times got rid of the names of the columns that they gave the op-ed columnists had each oh, had their own, name. like, yeah, exactly. uh, at home abroad. abroad and, things like. stuff, and I yeah. got upset and it didn't make any sense. Why would I care? And it made much, it. yeah. But yeah. it made much more sense to have the name of the columnist and instead of yeah. coming up with like some clever name, just call it Maureen Dowd or exactly. whatever. But so how do you feel about them, some of the changes that happened? Some of the changes, you know, some of the changes, I think it's just a matter of getting used to a lot of things. I remember this is like way back when, when the times used to be just all black and white. Mm -hmm. And it was the great, great, you know, the old gray <laughs> lady. And they were showing us internally pictures of what the New York Times is going to look like when it has color on the front page and color on the inside. And I remember thinking, it just looks so weird. It looks so <laughs> strange to have color. And now, of course, it's like colors popping off the page, right. and we don't even think anything of it. So, <laughs> in fact, um, I notice when it's all an all black and white page. I notice that now. If you notice that now, because some of the inside pages. Yeah, are still that there, yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, yeah. a that'll sort of date me, but right. and how could you have traveled with all black and white? Oh, yeah. we did. Yeah, you did. That's right. Black and seeking amore. Oh, this is interesting. It's about uh, black women who have found, gone to Italy and found love. Even and, though, and in some ways, already, Italy has issues it with has, racism and yeah, stuff, Yeah, even though the issues of racism, and then there's tour groups that are focused on that. Mm. On that. Lots of travel tips, mm -hmm. and then explore a uh, celebration of women's rights. This is the 19th Amendment the, in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin yeah. uh, outside the door, nature is knocking. Wow. Well, this would, doesn't look, oh my isn't God. that look crazy? Yeah. That's would you, Peru. Would you stay, would you, oh, Peru, I don't think so. In some place like I that? don't think Transparent so. Transparent bubbles await. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, Emirates, my one of my favorite airlines. Oh, gosh, they yes. do great work there. I love beautiful going photos. Yeah. Uh, for this island was, hopping, take a ferry instead. The British version. Yeah, this is an interesting story, and the photos great. An expansive startup nation emerges in Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, this is about what's happening there, and letting it go in a frozen lake in. Oh, Joyce Vermont. Maynard did this. Oh, famous yeah, Joyce writer. is great, famous writer. Yeah, and uh, black women. I guess these are. Uh, so I want to read the story. Yeah, and it's about, as I say, it's about organizations that focus on this market. To right. bring, Look uh, at this. Miss Weaver has been called the dream weaver and black woman, the black woman's Italian love guru. So yeah. that's her. So there you go. Yeah. Oh, that's fascinating. All right. We're running out of time mm -hmm. here. So very quickly, things that I'm just going to not read. Obviously, we won't have time. Yeah. An excerpt from Deacon King Kong, the new novel by James McBride, the awesome uh, journalist, writer, former New York uh, Columbia Journalism School Graduate, I mean, yeah. a former, a former student. And look how it's laid out. And Beautiful colors. How do they decide? I mean, you I don't have, know. You don't I have, have no, no idea. idea. Have, never, they, have you seen I, this before? No, no. I was really surprised to see And this. how this fits in with the book review and yeah. all of that. I don't know. It's fantastic. It's, look it's, at this. I mean, the colors are amazing. And I, the book excerpt is in print only. So another reason to subscribe to, to the, the print, print edition. And James McBride, the yeah. awesome, awesome writer. Yeah. I had the honor of meeting him. And the New York Times labs it puts this together caitlin roper they also do the kids section mm -hmm. and look at this entire team uh hillary shanahan alex carp adam sternberg rob hoberger deb bishop uh lovia garki folks if you want to be on our read along one day please let us know we'd love to have you i think the times does that where they they, they experiment they're yeah. very experimental they try something and then sure. it works it works and if it doesn't very quickly at the book yeah. review. I mm -hmm. love reading the I book review. Reading. I don't. I get this to read cool. more of the book review than I read, read books. books. Yeah. yeah. To celebrate mm -hmm. Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. we roam the country collecting unforgettable fiction that explores matters of the heart in different cities. New York mm -hmm. was Breakfast at Tiffany's Tiffany, by Truman yeah. Capote, and New Jersey was Philip Roth, Goodbye Columbus. Mm -hmm. Laura Silverman says beautiful layout looks like Martha Rich illustrations in the text balloons. I guess mm -hmm. in the uh, over there we can mm -hmm. check that. And uh, what do they put for California? Let's see, Isabel Alande's Daughter of Fortune. Yeah. 
and Arizona Barbara Kringsolver's The Bean Trees, and Alaska's uh, The Snow Child. Mm -hmm. uh, so lots of interesting things here. A uh, group text looking for a book worthy yeah, of discussion. Yeah, this is kind of like here. a book. It's kind of like a book group. Yeah, online. and they're showing you what to this do. Is, yeah. No, yeah. yeah, so that's kind of really, interesting. This is really cool graphic novels. Oh, you always uh, like to see yeah, which exactly. ones are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, so you like looking at these two. So American mm -hmm. Dirt. So this is a movie, the book that kind of got canceled, but there it is, at yeah, number there one. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Vendetta Road by Christine Fian. Don't know anything about it. When you see it by Lisa Gardner. Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens and A Minute to Midnight by David Baldacci. Please tell me if you've read any of these. Crawdads. I read yeah. Crawdads. Profiles in Corruption by Peter Schweitzer about Clinton Cash. Oh, so this is more yeah, about it's the more right, it's a right, more right wing. wing. Yeah. A Very Stable Genius by mm -hmm. Philip Rucker. And they, they were just Hunting. speaking at Columbia J School. They were fantastic. Yeah, they're yeah. Uh, uh, Washington Post writers. Washington Post, The yeah. Mamba Mentality, Kobe Bryant, Educated by Tara Westover. Read I it. have it on my book. Oh, I read book it. List. And Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson. And more wine ads mm -hmm. here and uh, Smarter Living. So this is the section where they do really interesting practical mm -hmm. tips in the New York mm -hmm. Times of a work, investing, technology, mm -hmm. et cetera. And look at these drawings by Seymour Trost, Literary Lovers, Desdemony yeah. and Othello, yeah. Pygmalion, Galatea, The Bible, Samson mm -hmm. and Delilah, Galia. Ivanhoe and Delina, David and Giovanni. Uh, I'm not sure which story that uh, is. Yeah, some of them I, I Karen, did. Karen, I'm not sure. Yeah, some Maple, I got. Maple, Bloom, and Molly. Yeah. Yes, uh, I mean, it's nice to have all this information, but it, it'd be nicer if it were like outside ads, you know, yeah, from, from. That's right. Yeah, we always want to see them. See more than a house More support, ad. yeah. yeah. Uh, Amy uh, Zipkin's watching from Connecticut. Thank oh, you for watching. Mm -hmm. uh, the Metropolitan section, I think, is available only in. Maybe, I don't like know. Like this, yeah. yeah. I, it's sure. online. I, yeah. It's Some online. Some portions of it, yeah, yeah, but not like this. This was yeah. interesting. I didn't even know that whole phenomenon existed. Yeah. Oh, Car Washers of Inwood. Yeah, it's Folks, up in the two, yeah. like Broadway and 200 something street. Yeah. Folks, we're um, running out of time. So mm -hmm. we're going to just read fast. Rashad Robinson uh, is indulging a fashion passion as the president of Color of Change, a racial justice organization. Mm -hmm. That's terrific. Uh, Joy blooms as baseball card season arrives. The market is rich. Already paying for two storage units to house 50,000 baseball cards. Are you a sports person? Uh, you're okay. a fan of sports? Okay. okay. I used to play a lot of tennis. Oh, nice. Not anymore? I, I tore my ACL oh, when I was nice. skiing. And oh. after that, it oh. kind of put the kibosh on things. I understand. How to make your marriage gear. Same-sex mm -hmm. spouses. I think you've already read this one, Dana. Do you want to just come and talk us through this? If you've read the, the story, we'll give you a second. We're not there yet. Uh, there have been 10 black senators since 1865. 150 years ago, Senator Hiram Revels was the first. And uh, equality, that wasn't enough. Uh, Donald Trump, defender of democracy yes, and anti-corruption uh, uh, crusader, as we know, with the Bidens. Yeah. Uh, a family exactly, like the yeah. most corrupt person is going after corruption. It's the opposite yeah. of the... Uh, uh, the shoemakers' children have no shoes. Yeah. yeah, this is the opposite. Yeah. The, the shoemakers' children have all the shoes. shoes. Well, and the same thing in China, where the corruption, uh, anti-corruption campaign is really basically a way to, pur you know, for Xi Jinping yeah. to purge a lot of folks he doesn't want. Lakshmi Kumaran's watching, and she says she's inside a train in Trivandrum, Kerala, where my parents live, to Mangalore, uh -huh. Karnataka. Really enjoyed the session. So, wow, is that amazing? Hello, yeah. hello, hello. That's fantastic. Uh, Neil says, "Go Yankees!" A big Yankees uh -huh. fan. So uh, let's ask the unmarried person here mm -hmm. uh, to tell us about this article uh, that you read because you clearly read a big part of it. So, so what is what is the story? It's based on um, the study about uh, what makes why people in marriages end up fighting, uh -huh. and apparently, people in homosexual marriages have reportedly just been happiest, more stress-free relationships. And one of the most interesting metrics is how dishes predict this card. Mm -hmm. So. The people have had fights over who should wash the dishes, and it's basically been very like gendered ideas of um, chores mm -hmm. and unwillingness to really break those stereotypes huh. is what's created tension between couples. And then I, what, what I thought was interesting was that the Times also did a follow-up piece to this, where they had people um, send in their own personal anecdotes about um, their own relationships. I'm not sure if it's. I mean, I saw it online. I saw it on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's been published, but. Print. Interesting um, thought. Yeah, that's story. That but cool. also think about kind of, how kind of counterintuitive. the follow-up story has yeah. already been written. Yeah. I mean, exactly. people are already following yeah. up. Yeah. 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 Because you got a lot of comments yeah. from people saying, yeah, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so Vandana, who is helping as part of the New York Times read-along, 
uh, let me just ask you, Vandana, what, what not, just generally, what is your, not that you're spokesperson for your whole generation, but what is your, you know, having not lived in America till you came here to study at Penn, what is your relationship with the print generally? Like, uh, do you, do you find time for it? Do your friends read it? Uh, what is your, no, your not really. I think uh, I get most of my news online. Uh -huh. um, but I, you come from India where there are five, 10, 15 newspapers sometimes that people then, get. I yeah. Mean, yeah, I mean, um, we get like every morning. Once, we come get to the side, come to the yeah. side. Yeah, where have you on the um, light? Yeah. Every morning we mm. get a couple of like newspapers home, but I, I mean, I tried to make it a habit growing up to really read the paper, but I never did. I get most of my news online. Right. Um, when I started working, I found that that was the best time, that the commute was really the best time right. to read the paper, and that's when I did most of that. But um, I, yeah, and having worked in digital mm -hmm. media, what I also have found is that most print outlets end up having a digital desk. So everything that they do goes up online almost immediately, simultaneously. Right. Um, and there's a completely different timetable to it, right? Yeah. I, yeah, I get most of my news online um, and I find it so much easier to just kind of get it, like just see it in one place. Yeah, so we're gonna, uh, this is Vandana Menon. She's Vandana underscore Menon. Hit her up on, on, on Twitter. She's been uh, uh, posting about the read along and she's, uh, in, in the job market. So if you want to hire a journalist who didn't go to journalism school no, instead, what did you study? School. Tell them. I did history and anthropology at Penn and I worked on the forced displacement of indigenous tribes from within tiger reserves. Wow. So I'm interested in like that kind of thing. But, oh, nice. Um, Reporting. So you're interested yeah. in any journalism. We also want to thank our sponsors, the Bombay Shirt Company, that they've been so supportive uh, over over time for all my work. And uh, good luck, Vandana, in, in all, all you do. Uh, fear, knowledge, and coronavirus. Uh, who's behind your outrageous medical bills? No one with authority in Washington has done much of anything about it. And the Mean Girl mashup. How yeah. Queen B and her friends from Mean Girls let Mitch McConnell and Kellyanne sit at their lunch table so that's uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, to read that they, they made it into a musical somehow right yeah uh men you need to listen women please speak out so this is the new york times talking about oh the letters editor asking for i believe more oh, women more to write, write letters. letters and uh kimberly probolis uh whose letter to the editor inspired the women's project reflects a year later so that's hmm, very very interesting very cool and nick Kristoff is going okay. to be yeah. at my conference, the Social Media Weekend, coming up March 21st uh, in New York City at Pace University. We're so delighted to partner with them and with Muckrack. Please join us. Nick and his wife, Cheryl Wu Dunn, are going to be speaking on, uh, on Saturday night, Saturday evening at our closing event. The meaning of a giant roast pig. Uh, the decision yeah. to stop eating meat can alienate us from our traditions. And when an when eighty year old parents, parents divorce, divorce, yeah, wow. wow. I thought their bond was indestructible. Now I mourn it. And thank you, mm -hmm. Neil, for linking to Social Media Weekend, March twenty first. There's also a Friday uh, activities. Just very quickly, uh, Arts and Leisure, uh, Zoe Kravitz uh, uh, on the cover. She uh, is she in Little Big Lies or is that yeah, her? Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. Lies. Big Little Lies. Yes. Yeah. A remake of the film her mother was in 30 years ago, which oh. has now been made into a television show. Oh. Which one is that? High Fidelity. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, I haven't seen that. Deciding when it's... Uh, so there's more asking... Like, so there's more like mm -hmm. Q&A things. There used yeah. to be only the etiquette, yeah. the ethicist, and now there's now the there's etiquette more, and so much and there's more. There's also, if you notice, more stories now that are more kind of like... Um, they're sort of like a little bit digital in the sense that it's not a narrative. It's like kind of like a headline and then it's an explainer and a headline sure, and an explainer. So sure. there's a lot more stories that are kind of uh, sort of like in little bites. Yeah. And just great to have uh, everybody watching from around the world. Next week's guest is another Leslie. Oh. Uh, yes, she's president of international media, Leslie Byrne. Oh. And Leslie uh, also has uh, journalism connections, John Byrne. Uh, from uh, Business Week, uh, oh. the editor uh, is part of her family. family. Yeah, wow. wanted endless crushes. The team behind "To All the Boys I've Loved Before" has mm -hmm. franchise aspirations. I don't know, not familiar with that. Have you heard that uh, yeah. show? Yeah, it's a yes. uh, I'm yeah. teaching at Stony Brook University's journalism school for the first time, teaching undergrads, and I 
never felt so disconnected from pop culture, even though I have two 16 year olds who tell me I'm totally disconnected anyway. But they told me there's a show called You that everybody's watching. (laughs) Have you heard of it? No. Okay, so she has. What? Tell us about it. Yeah. Oh, you don't want me to come back there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Oh, um, and I'm sorry, by the way, that was a um, typo. It's not another Leslie. It's Kate Byrne. B Y R N E, not Leslie, because I think we're only allowed one Leslie Leslie a year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Yeah, so tell us about You. Um, you is about a psychopath, essentially. It's a love, it's psychopath's love story. He's obsessed with, he spends the first season being in love with this girl in New York, and then he moves to LA and spends the second season being in love with this woman in LA. And it's just, it's so creepy, it's so obsessed, obsessive, and so disturbing, but so addictive. <laughs> yeah, people in your generation love this I thing. Love yeah. I, know, I don't even know, what, what is it on? What pro- what it's pro- on Netflix. It's on okay. Netflix. So the guy who um, was in Gossip Girl, which mm-hmm. was a big, big, yeah. Yeah, a big show, um, yeah. he's on the show now. I never yeah. saw Gossip Girl, but yeah. they did have a scene at the Met or on the steps, on the steps of the Met. Of the, uh, and yeah. so people would come and recreate yeah. that and talk yeah. to me about it all the time. Al Pacino stalks Nazis in this pulpy thriller. So much to read. Like, oh, so, yeah, and then also the ads really funny, in this yeah. section are yeah. colorful yeah. And, and great looking. And David K. Johnson spoke at our last social media weekend. Oh, yeah. And uh, he's, blurbing he's blurbing Paul the Krugman, Krugman book. book yeah. And uh, uh, David was your colleague. Yeah, he's and, very active on the Times yes, Alumni website. That's right. Uh, and also on social media, we got yeah. him. Uh, how I booked him was I was watching him on... Um, on JetBlue, you know how the TV, so oh, he, was, yes, he was on interview on CNN. So I tweeted at him uh, while at 35,000 feet. And within an hour, we were he was booked to come and speak at Social Media Weekend, oh which gosh, is yeah. social media at work. So yeah. last two things, real estate, no one can afford I, anything. I love this. This is the first section I read every every. Really? Week. Tell yes. us why. I don't know. I'm just kind of, <laughs> I have a pattern to read. And I start out on Saturday reading the real estate first, okay. then the travel. I think it's because it's the fun stuff. Okay. And then I go into the first right. section where right. things get serious. I mean, I, I think a lot about this. Like, how do you design a place where you want to live forever or not forever or for as long as you can. And so that's, I think, I and my childhood house was featured in this one time. Oh my God. And one of those, what you can get. Yeah, for yeah, 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 cities. exactly. I didn't know. I just opened the paper and there was my childhood house. Did you house. scream? I, almost, I was like, what? And ridiculous price, right? So and ridiculous <laughs> price, yeah. yes. Okay. La, 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 last mm-hmm. section, Sunday styles. We learned from Stuart Elliott that they do special paper. And yes. from Tom Jolly and Mike Connors yes, because yeah. they want to get higher quality advertising, advertising. See right? How it's yeah, it is. It's higher quality. It's yeah, you can see the even the difference in color. color. You can see how it's it thicker. pops. Yeah, and house plants withering. Hire a stylist. I want to hire a waterer because mm-hmm. my wife is always complaining that we don't water the plants when she's not here. Ben Schwartz hits the arcade. His happy place. I don't know who that is. He's the voice of Sonic the Hedgehog, taking the expansive <laughs> vision of Mark Jacobs. Uh, fashion so week. Have you been to have... Fashion Week, by the way? No. Ever? It looks kind of fun. Though, yeah, exactly. In a weird way. Uh, I mean, like the richness of the ads. Yeah, I mean, there's Ralph. Oh, yeah, there's Ralph. <laughs> yeah. Still around. Mm-hmm. Not canceled. Yeah. Uh, like so many. I mean, that's one of the things when I see somebody trending on Twitter. You think I like, they're going to go? Are they, are they canceled? Dead? Uh, what has happened? Yeah. The other day, Ringo Starr was trending and I said, oh my God. Yeah. And then fortunately, he wasn't dead or canceled. Mm-hmm. He was getting some Awards Queen's or honor, honors yeah. or something like that. I want an app, actually, where I can like just Google somebody and get a full summary of whether they're a good person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could start that as a section on Wikipedia. Yeah. Uh, the past returns and wants another chance. Agreeing to see him again would require minor miracle. Miracle, that's what happened. This is the modern love. And now so they have I tiny don't. love stories. Tiny love stories. I don't know if they have this online, so let's read this. I think they and do. We're almost out of time. Yeah. My polygamist ancestor and me. My middle name is Traugott after my only polygamist ancestor. At 36, I came out as gay, divorced my wife and left the Church of Jesus of Latter- Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons. At 37, I began dating a man. At 42, we married. A year later, we entered the stormy landscape of polyamory. We have each other, our children, and boyfriends. I never thought I could, I would have anything more in common with Traugott than an odd name. Now I wonder, could he and his two wives have given me or given me relevant advice, a map for my new love life? Oh, sweet Jesus, the irony, Sean Bitters. And here is part of his family, I guess. Amazing, amazing. Uh, she created a dance and doesn't get the credit. A teenager's after school choreography is co-opted by many others. She invented a dance called the Renegade. Mm-hmm. I've not heard yeah. of it. So it's, um, 
Amid the noise, a quiet style, suddenly a spring of Bloomberg memes. And a yeah. uh, final thing I'll put you on the spot for is to read one of the social cues, Philip Galanz oh, has, has a terrific yeah. uh, column. Okay, same gift. I, I love this Some column. Gift. Yeah, it's a great column. It. Yeah, okay, so let's read this. I took my boyfriend to the theater as a gift. The people who sat next to us, our age, Gen X, well-dressed and drinking champagne, smelled so bad that it ruined the experience for us. <laughs> I'm not sensitive to body odor, and I nearly gagged. My boyfriend is more sensitive, and he had to run to the men's room several times. It was sold-out performance, and our seats cost me a lot. What should we have done? On the spot there, Leslie Wayne will also get the other generation to speak. In a I have no idea, <laughs> honestly. Has that ever happened to you? No, it's I never don't happened know. to me. Drinking it's champagne and smelling? Like that. And also, usually young people don't smell, <laughs> yeah. you know? No, no, these are, yeah, these are, yeah, these are young people. Young yeah, people. yeah, yeah. So, so I, I mean, you could have... I, I, you can't change. You could go back. To, you could go back to the box office, explain the situation, see if you could get your seats changed. That would be. Or for the next, or ask them if you can come back. It was so terrible. Terrible. Because of full sold out performance. Yeah, so. exactly. All right, and what would you do, young person? Oh, <laughs> I honestly don't know. This is this sounds awful. <laughs> Um, it's hard to like give cues in the dark while watching the show. Yeah, and also what yeah. do you yeah, what do you do? Yeah. yeah. For mentoring and a museum. This is of course the column um, that was done by, by Bill the great Cunningham. Bill Cunningham. Yeah. I once had a picture taken by Bill Cunningham oh, yeah. of me. Yeah. And it was so amazing. I didn't know it was him first, uh, because it was just an old guy come to me to take a picture at a at a at the uh, at the committee to protect journalists dinner. Yeah. Uh, an unexpected well, he was, path you know, he towards was a press in, in the newsroom. He kept calling everybody kiddo. If you're in the <laughs> elevator with him, it's hey kiddo, hey kiddo. That way you don't have to learn. Maybe I'm going to yeah. start that. That's easier. Yeah. Look at all the vowels sections yeah. and the women's sports page. You know that's what they. Oh, call that's what this. they call this. Yeah. yeah. And uh, now you see also how, again, things how have changed, evolved. right? You see people of color. There's Vikram and mm -hmm. Vikram Singh and Kanika Shah. And Yuvaraj Shivalingam, yeah, and two men, two men, Noah Mamis and Joan, Jonah Ziplo, yeah, Brian Novisky and Paul mm -hmm. Harris. There's some society editor from 50 years ago clutching her pearls Pearl somewhere. Saying, <laughs> yeah, saying, saying, oh what is gosh. happening? What is happening yeah. to, the, to my favorite section? A wedding without dad, Joy still had its way, and uh, they're more than happy not to get married. Many women are opting out of relationships and prefer to be single. You don't have any sacrifices to make when you're on your own, you make all the decisions but so, you have to do the dishes you have to by do yourself. Yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so on that interesting note let's call it a day i'm going to throw it back to neil in just a minute but first let's just have uh leslie say goodbye and tell us where we can find her work where we can look her up of course you have a page on the uh, on the columbia okay. journalism school website i've got a page on the columbia journalism school website and if you go and you say uh leslie wayne new york times It'll pop up with all my stories in in, in Google or in, in Google. or even inside New York well, Times. Actually, it's, it's actually easier sometimes just mm -hmm. to Google it. Just yeah. Google just do Leslie Wayne. Nice. L i e w a y n e. Nice. New York Times and my stories will pop up. Nice and uh, yeah. name one of the most memorable stories. If I had to search and I could read only one Leslie Wayne story. Actually, this is my pre-obit interview of you. <laughs> uh, a story that I did about Delaware is a tax haven. Okay. Because everybody likes to point overseas, so there's these tax havens everywhere right, right. overseas. Caymans and things, and yeah. And when I wrote that story, it got a lot of attention. Oh. It was for the Sunday business. I mean, now it's well known that it is. So this was an early I, story. It was yeah. an earlier story. Oh, nice. And I think that story has had tremendous legs. Oh, nice. Say. Yeah. Nice. Oh, that's, that's terrific. So what are you going to do rest of Sunday? Rest of Sunday, I'm going to be looking at an open house for a friend who is mm. out of New York but mm. wants me to check on an apartment. Oh, people she's, love doing just going on about, looking at this. Yeah. About buying. yeah. And then tonight, I'm meeting friends to see a play at Playwrights Horizons. Oh, you know? nice. Yeah, yeah, that's a great place to yeah. uh, see. So wonderful. Uh, there are people in New York who don't go out. Read, and I'll be reading a little more of the paper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you've read a lot already. Yeah. Uh, there are people who live in Manhattan and New York and don't get out much. What do you say to them who they could be living in? They might as well live somewhere else, right? They might as well live somewhere else because, <laughs> I mean, New York is such, I mean, it's so rich and there's so much to do. In fact, it's it's almost overwhelming. It's like you read the paper and you see all the different cultural things. <laughs> sorry, I'm going to have you to say that again. Yeah, sorry. We just, because we, oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you know, you look at the paper and you see, like in the art section, all the different things that are happening at Lincoln Center, or wherever. Right. Yeah. And it's almost, um, Time, you know, it's almost exhausting just to read the list. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I just start kind of every so often, you know, just get a ticket to Lincoln Center, obviously the Met <laughs> Opera. Yeah. Um, and there's tons of free stuff. And to me also just walking down the streets 
Yeah. You know, the streets are a mosaic. It's a kaleidoscope of activity. I can just pick a different part of the city that I haven't been in. And I just walk the streets. I mean, sometimes I go to Chinatown because I miss being in China. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, I nice, do. nice. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Um, we're hearing, uh, including in the Washington Post, a story about how uh, Chinese folks are being discriminated against because mm -hmm. of the virus. Yeah. And even some Chinese restaurants are having, are, a, having a hard time. So something. order some Chinese today. Yeah. We're, we're going mm -hmm. to order some Chinese mm -hmm. food tonight for uh, lunch, uh, mm -hmm. today for lunch. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching the awesome Thank Leslie you. Wayne. Thank applause, everybody. applause. Thank uh, you, everybody. And thank follow you. her uh, work. Uh, you will <laughs> find her online. And uh, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. I uh, want you want to see many of you at Social Media Weekend, and there's Neil, uh, the good producer that he's oh, pointing he's out. We're way over over time. Over time. Uh, Neil, I'll let you take it away and a plug for next week's guest, uh, as well as uh, wanting to see everybody at Social Media Weekend, March 21st. It's a Saturday with optional uh, included Friday uh, fun stuff, lot fun stuff. Uh, it's always pinned to the top of my Twitter feed at Sri. Instagram is Sri Net. And uh, please also uh, uh, send me email. I would love to chat. Sri at Sri.net, S-R-E-E -E at S-R-E-E.net. Sri.com is a chain of motels in Florida. <laughs> so uh, so the, uh, that, that's made for the travel <laughs> yeah, section one day. Yeah. Yeah. But thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. Tag your friends even now. They can watch this on LinkedIn or on Facebook. And we'll see you next Sunday, every Sunday. 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. Thanks, everybody. Well, while you're Bye. still on the screen, Shree, while you're still on the screen, next yeah. week's yeah. guest, I uh, just want to show real quick, Kate Byrne from Intentional Media, not International Media. My apologies for that, Kate. Uh, will be our guest February 23rd. And I want to just share a moment in terms of share a little bit about her uh, background for folks. Really looking forward to this um, episode. And, and Diane Stefani, thank you for uh, arranging this for us. Um, we have uh, uh, Kate's uh, background. She's the president of Intentional Media, the purpose-driven platform whose brands, social capital markets, total impact, and conscious company media are at the intersection of business, meaning, and money. You can see some of her article, The Secret Ingredient to Innovation in Business, Women, The Inconvenient Truth About the Business Roundtable's Recent Reveal, and How and Why to Get More Women on Boards. Yes. So certainly a, a fascinating discussion next week. Uh, Shri will be hosting, um, and we will be bringing her on uh, via stream StreamYard as a remote guest. Um, so, Diane uh, Stefani, thank you again for facilitating that. Um, and Shri and Leslie, great job today. We really loved uh, today's show um, and uh, couldn't have asked for uh, a better experience for folks. Thank you. Thank you very much. And everyone, uh, we'll be posting the uh, link to the video on YouTube uh, as we've started doing, and we'll be sharing uh, the link in the Twitter thread as well. Uh, until next week, this is Shree Sunday New York Times Read Along. Uh, thank you for joining us and making this part of your Sunday morning routine. <laughs>